Uh, let's check this out. We begin today with an alarming new milestone right here in America. New York State now has more reported coronavirus cases than any country in the world. It also has more people than many most countries. countries. Yeah. Like, come on. Let that sink in for just a second. And new pictures are a disturbing reminder of the human toll of that. This is a mass grave being dug for mass coronavirus. grave, Royce. One, two. Seven, eight, seven, eight. Mass grave. Virus victims at New York City's Potter's Field, where unclaimed bodies are laid to rest. So many people are dying in New York City due to coronavirus complications that the morgues are crowded to the point where new graves are being dug off Hart Island near the Bronx. Isn't that normally where they bury the homeless people? And, I mean, and, I'm, I'm, and people I wrong? in prison that are indigent, that don't have the money. That don't, don't have family. Have the, the, yeah. Hart Island always has a, quite a few boxes heading over there on the weekend. Not I mean, a, I'm not trying to sound evil or anything or uncaring, but they're pretending like they had to, oh, man, we got to make this special place called Hart Island where we'll put all these. This is already where they just throw people in. They've been throwing people in mass graves here for, since the fucking 1910s. This is, a lo- this is another... Where it's like, let me. This is what they do. They lie by omission. This is master liars do this in real life. You you tell somebody things that are true, but you're leaving out the fact that it's like right, that's also the island where we just throw a bunch of dead fucking poor people. So that's what they're doing. And, and are there more of them? Because of you can say that you can go. Wow, things are really picking up around here. It's been busier than it's been in a long time over in this island. And you can say that and be honest. But they're not painting an honest. There's a way to tell the truth, but to not paint an honest picture. And that's what these cocksuckers do, and they know they do it. Crews are burying unclaimed bodies that have been at the morgue for more than two weeks. That, that's that's that happens in every major city. I mean, that's not. By, by the way, something else. Crews are burying bodies that were in major cities. Adding to what you said about them lying. They're not even saying they died of coronavirus. Because some of them aren't, haven't. But what I'm saying is, they, and but that's why they're going, wow, it's so busy here. Some of those boxes, of course, are. But there were already some boats heading out there, Royce. There's a boat heading out there every weekend with, with boxes of dead people. Is there more? Absolutely. They're pretending like there's never a boat heading out there. That's... That's what you're... Like, what we're both saying. It, it's this weird... They paint a very dishonest picture. So- Still, the state's new hospitalizations are the lowest they have been since the coronavirus crisis. So good news again. Started and ICU Yay. admissions are at their lowest level in more than three weeks. Yay. All right. That's awesome, guys. Right, people on Hard Island. Boo. Nice. Nice. <laughs> All of this data suggests that we are flattening the curve so far. And that's why one place that was supposed to be a field hospital is scaling back. Beds had been set up two days ago at this Manhattan cathedral. They've now been packed away. So they never even used them. They never had to use them. Meanwhile, logistical issues appear to be... Look at, the, look at those overrun hospitals. Look at those overrun hospitals. Part of the reason... Why Tell you what, fu- man. Anybody who does need to be hospitalized in the next few weeks, you're going to get VIP treatment. Get a great room. <laughs> nice, clean, everything clean. Everything, all fucking private rooms. 500 bed hospital ship Comfort has treated only 80 patients so far. What a colossal waste of resources. What do you say to people in Manhattan who are looking at this saying you got this big, beautiful ship with a lot of room and it's practically empty? The optics may not be great. We've been working with, uh, again, uh, the. In Michigan, the number of deaths in a single day was expected to peak on Thursday. Detroit nurse Jennifer Rauco says she saw three bodies taken to the morgue in one shift. Oh, my God. It's time to burn every document this country was found. Three deaths. People are dying. You don't care. People are dying. And it's like, yeah, okay, and we're going to go. You know what we're going to do? We're going to open back up. Real life is going to resume. And more people are actually going to die in the course of real life every day than have been dying sitting at home waiting to go back to life. People want to leave their house and increase their chance of dying right now so they could go back to their job sites and their coal mines and their fucking, seriously, and their construction sites. People want to go out every day. They miss 
going out and risking death on the goddamn freeway so they could drive to work and feed their fucking family. And I'm, I'm not even downplaying the fact that the virus is deadly. Whether it's deadly or not isn't even the question. Of course the virus is deadly. People have died. Viruses, flu is deadly. Viruses are deadly, right? <clears throat> but I guess my issue is, is that I don't care if you think the virus is deadly. I don't care if you think it's the worst thing in the world. What I do care about is shutting down an entire c country. And you know what else kills people? Poverty. You know, like that kills, being unemployed kills people. We begin today with an alarming new milestone right here in America. New York State now has more reported coronavirus cases than any country in the world. Let that sink in for just a second. And new pictures are a disturbing reminder of the human toll of that. This is a mass grave being dug for coronavirus victims at New York City's Potter's Field, where unclaimed bodies are laid to rest. David, good morning. So we've been hearing about deadliest days in New York for several days in a row, but we may be hearing we may we may be hitting a turning point, turning a corner. How so? Well, maybe so, Tony, and let me tell you why. In speaking with one of the commanders here on the ship yesterday, I said to him, how come you've only treated 100 patients or so when you have capacity for so much more? And he said, sir, we're just not getting that many patients coming to us. The need doesn't exist. So we called the governor's office and the governor's office told us this. There are 90,000 hospital beds statewide because they've had to add so many in recent weeks but only 18,000 of them are actually filled. So many people are dying in New York City due to coronavirus complications that the morgues are crowded to the point where new graves are being dug off Hart Island near the Bronx. Crews are burying unclaimed bodies that have been at the morgue for more than two weeks. Still, the state's new hospitalizations are the lowest they have been since the coronavirus crisis started and ICU admissions are at their lowest level in more than three weeks. All of this data suggests that we are flattening the curve so far. And that's why one place that was supposed to be a field hospital is scaling back. Beds had been set up two days ago at this Manhattan Cathedral. They've now been packed away. Meanwhile, logistical issues appear to be part of the reason why the 500-bed hospital ship Comfort has treated only 80 patients so far. What do you say to people in Manhattan who are looking at this saying you got this big, beautiful ship with a lot of room and it's practically empty? The optics may not be great. But the virus continues to spread in places in the Midwest. In Michigan, the number of deaths in a single day was expected to peak on Thursday. Detroit nurse Jennifer Rauco says she saw three bodies taken to the morgue in one shift. Hart Island is a precious bit of real estate in the Bronx, and it faces an uncertain future. At the moment, the city uses Hart Island as a potter's field, but Roger Sharp reports there are plans for its development. Hart Island, a mile-long piece of neglected real estate, purchased for $75,000 in 1868 by the city of New York. 120 acres of sand and green stretching over the end of Long Island Sound, near where the East River begins. Its neighbor, the boating-busy City Island, is thriving, now in peak summer season. But City Island has direct bridge access to the city mainland, while the only way to Hart Island is by ferry. Today it is desolate, for the most part, abandoned. In fact, on Hart Island right now, the only sign of life is death. Potter's Field still occupies the northeastern third of the island, the city's cemetery for paupers and unknowns. Louisa Van Slyke was 24 when she died at Charity Hospital in 1869 and she was the first person to be buried here in Potter's Field on Hart Island. Since then, over the past 109 years or so, a total of 650,000 people have been buried in graves such as this. The coffins are buried three deep in trenches. When known, 
names are etched on the boxes, each plot carefully marked. Each year, about 150 bodies are disinterred when family or friends are able to make identification. One plot is set aside for tiny baby boxes, grim evidence of our high infant mortality rate. The babies or fetuses are all buried in one particular part of Potter's Field. The posts over here signify which hospital the infant comes from. And then each tiny pine box is lined up for each hospital. All of these in New York. There are two or three burial days a week here. The burial detail made up of Rikers Island inmates. Prisoners serving less than a year volunteer and earn 35 cents an hour. Inmates built the peace monument to the unknown dead, which dominates the Hart Island landscape. Over the decades, the scene is little changed as the same ground is recycled about every 25 years. This was a burial detail in the 40s. In those years, in fact, going back to the turn of the century, Hart Island itself was the site of a city prison. Back in the, oh, the late 50s, around 57, they had over 1,000 inmates on the island. That was the busiest time that I ever saw here. But then with the new construction down on Rikers Island, they moved everything down there. Joseph Bartles, a chief engineer for the Department of Correction. He worked on Hart Island for more than 20 years, and his grandfather was a guard here for almost 50 years. Well, it really, just, really doesn't look like it was ever a prison. Well, when they renovated, they, they never had bars on the windows. They had heavy expanded metal. Because most of the men are up here only doing six months to a year at the most. So they, they liked it up here. It was a good jail. You had to be in jail. You had to be locked up. This was a good place to be. This was the best, this was the best place to be. These seats are from the old Ebbets Field. The inmates, of course, when this was a prison area, liked to play ball. They were tearing down Ebbets Field, so the warden asked to have the seats. And they ring the field here. The bases out there are marked with old railroad ties. They were taken from the old 3rd Avenue L. Near the ball field, evidence of the Army Nike missile base, which occupied about 10 acres of Hart Island in the 50s. During that same time, some of the island buildings were also used as a shelter for homeless derelicts. By 1966, the island was no longer a city prison. And in 68, the state spent $3 million to fix up the buildings for Phoenix House. Young people in that drug program even began farming here. But the cost of up to a million dollars a year for operating the ferry to and from the island became too much. And Phoenix House moved out nearly two years ago. Everybody who comes out here says it's really a shame that something isn't done with this place. But needless to say, with all its money problems, the city of New York isn't going to do anything. There are those, however, who do have some very specific ideas about Hart Island. I wouldn't like to see it another drug program or a, a place for uh, rehabilitated addicts or a job program. I think it should be developed in the marine nautical uh, sense and uh, that's what City Island and this area Long Island Sound is all about. Back in your grandfather's time, people who worked out here also lived out here. They did, yes. They raised their families out here. Children went to school over on City Island and they spent their whole existence free time over here. It was a good place to live. Well, from the stories my aunts and uncles tell me, it was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful. It could be again. Roger Sharp, Channel 7, Eyewitness News.